Christine from Cards by Christine coming to you live from the hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. We're ready for a Monday night stamping session. <laughs> and I had a full weekend full of stamping this past weekend. If you guys caught my live from Saturday, I was in Okemos, Michigan, and I was at a creative convention making lots of beautiful creations. <laughs> I attended a, a convention that was planned and everything was done for me pretty much except for a little cutting of designer paper and the stamping. And so I got to make cards that I didn't design, which was awesome. <laughs> Hi, Faye from Virginia. Hi, Linda Hodge. So it was a fun weekend. I went with uh, Carissa Alberts and Jennifer Merle Hampshire, two of my friends, and it was a seven hour drive to get over there and we left Thursday after I was done with work. Hi, Deanne, Excel, Estelle, and um, Carissa's watching now too, woohoo. So we drove over Thursday after I was done with work and we had a full day Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday morning we did a class and then on the way home, we stopped in Holland, Michigan and I met up with a bunch of my friends from Michigan. I call them my Michigan gals. <laughs> and hi, Stacey Burns. Hi, Carmen. And we had a great dinner at Applebee's. And then <laughs> Jennifer missed us so much because she left a few things in the hotel room. So we had to meet back up with Jennifer. <laughs> so yeah, it was a good weekend. Hi, hi, Penny. Hi, Sandy Wicklander. So hi, Angela. So let me show you, I, you guys. I'm going to flip the camera down. And I've got a bunch of things that I want to share with you um, with what I, I got a cool pillow gift from Jennifer. <laughs> oh, just opened her birthday card that Shauna got. Yay, awesome. <laughs> Hi, Donna McClellan from Louisiana. Thanks for sharing. I always appreciate when you guys share. It's so awesome um, to share the fun and creativity and the love. Uh, yay, and Angela finally gets to be live. You must be off of work tonight. That's exciting. Hi, Arliss. Uh, so I'm going to flip down, you guys. I do have a little bit of a hot mess of stuff, and we're going to go over a few things before we get to our fun stamping. And I have things to share with you and just wanted to remind you of some upcoming classes, show you some cards that I got in the mail, some happy mail. And when, um, when the time comes, we'll do roll call. I printed off that so we won't forget it. <laughs> so hi, Laura Sullivan. Hi, Julie Frost. Hi, Donna. Hi, Sherry. So yay, everybody's rolling in now. Hi, Julie. Hi, Mary Carls. Hi. Hi, everybody. So let me flip down and see if I can maybe make it look a little less messy. <laughs> so this is what I've got coming up. This is some cards I wanted to share, but this is what I wanted to show you first. So you guys, when, hi, Anne, when you guys do pillow gifts, a pillow gift is when you're sharing a room with somebody and uh, you leave them a little gift on their pillow or on the nightstand and... <laughs> I was a bad roommate. Hi, Lisa Nealon. I was a very bad roommate because Jennifer, she knows my favorite color is purple. Hi, Mitzi. And she knows that Carissa's color is blue. And so we had two of these waiting for us when we got there. And we're going to have to surprise Jennifer with some happy mail. But this is a pillow gift that she left. And this is uh, a little notepad, like one of those little post-it notes. And she's got purple post-it notes in here for me. It says, friendships refresh the soul. You truly inspire me. And it has some hand wash. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Peggy. Some um, sanitizer and a whole bunch of candy here. So, yeah, you guys. Even a Ghirardelli down in here, I think. Yep, Ghirardelli. Sea salt caramel. She knows I love my caramel. And look at this cute little bag here. So Jennifer does lives um, as well, and she did a live, this bow is so cute on here. She did a live last week, and she showed how to make these, and I believe Deanna Stell, you were watching her, and you were told not to <laughs> spill the secret. Hi, Jane. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Chris. And so this was what we got as our pillow gift, so it's super, super cool. I wanted to share. It's using some of the hand pen DSP and then the Highland Heather paper. So there's that, and I wanted to share with you guys. Um, and then you guys, Kelly put this. So while I was out gallivanting over Indiana, Illinois, and Michigan, <laughs> um, the notepad is really easy. And actually I could tell you in a second here before I, I, I move in case anybody else is wondering. Hi, Tabitha. Okay. So you guys, if you're curious, hi, Elaine Rebeck. If you're curious on this, um, the, I'll tell you the measurements. I'll grab my ruler out here and I'm actually going to have to get a bigger ruler because it's really easy. I think this is three and a quarter. So you guys, it's three and a quarter wide 
and let's go this way. Our measurements this way are seven inches and it's scored at three and a quarter and three and three quarters. Okay, so that's it. Seven by three and a quarter and it's scored at three and a quarter and three and three quarters. That gives you that half inch in the middle. That means that your mats here are three by three. Okay, so three by three, three by three, three by three. You could even do the back if you wanted. And then your DSP is probably a quarter inch less. So two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And then honestly, decorate it however you'd like to. Hi, Rita from West Michigan. So Rita, I was rolling through West Michigan yesterday, actually. <laughs> we should have had you meet up with us. So you guys, this little bow is so pretty. So that's it. Like that's all that there is really to it, to the notepad. And then this has fallen off. Um, so you just stick your notepad in there and you're good to go. So I hope that helped. And you wrote down those measurements while I was reading them off to you. Hi, Gail from Virginia. Okay, so you guys, while I was off gallivanting with, um, hi, April's Rain with Carissa, I'm meeting up with Jennifer. Kelly was in charge of the paper pumpkin class on, <laughs> on Thursday night. And she, it was a ball to watch, you guys. I laughed so hard. So I was driving and Carissa was holding the phone. <laughs> and I was just being so highly entertained. Hi, Patricia from North Carolina. So she put together the paper pumpkin. You guys, I don't have any of these kits left over. I got a few extra and they were gone before class even started on Thursday. She doesn't have candy in them, so I'm trying not to disrupt their little squirrely things on the top here but this one looks more like a strawberry to me so you fill them with candy and it just you could also put your mop make your box into this cute little wheelbarrow so she had it sitting here waiting for me and i thought it was the most adorable thing so if you are into your fall decorations definitely make <laughs> i have like they just don't want to stay put <laughs> so definitely make them up and use it for decoration this fall all right, so there's our pumpkin. And then I wanted to share with you guys some cards that I got in the mail. I was really close to you, I bet. If you're on the west side, I was in Holland. Oh, <laughs> I think the paper pumpkin kicked Kelly's butt, don't you guys think? And she, she was a trooper. She really pulled through, I think. I didn't get to watch the whole thing because we had to stop and get gas. Where do we get gas? In Portage, in Indiana, I think. And so we had to get some supper and, and I didn't watch the end of it, but I saw the struggle was real for her. But, oh my gosh. And then she made it through and you guys are gonna see her technique Thursday on Thursday. And she had a slight little accident with a two by four this weekend, yesterday. So you will see her beat up face on technique Thursday on Thursday. So. Yeah, be watching for that one. <laughs> so she's okay. She's taking aspirin and um, it looks worse than I think what it feels. So um, yeah. So anyways, yeah, she's had a rough weekend, <laughs> but that's how it goes sometimes. Okay, you guys, I got invited to a baby shower and this was the card. Uh, it's so pretty. Alina made this. This is a set from the annual catalog and it's got all the details on the inside for the invitation. So I have a baby shower to go to. I'm so excited. Uh, so there's a card I wanted to share with you guys. Now this card came from Karen Wettstein. If you guys recognize this, I bet you do. It definitely looks like our mystery card from last week. And she sent it to me. I'm so excited. I can't wait to put it on display. It's so pretty, Karen. Thank you for sharing that with me. And then this one came from Carolee Crab, you guys. It's that nuts, that nuts about squirrels or something. And it uses some of the beauty of the earth paper, but Okay, some subtle sim shimmer sequins. And when you open it up, it actually, she has um, a, like a flap here that you can tuck like a gift card in here or some cash or a check. And there's a little squirrel in here that it's so cool. Isn't that awesome? So you open it up and then it kind of, it's a movement card. And so it's so, so cool. So that was a card I got from Carol Lee. Now this one, came from Gwen Petrashek. And so Gwen wrote in here that she said, oh my, how has card making progressed through the years that this is one of the first cards she has ever made. And she parted with it and she sent it to me and um, she was signing up for the MS benefit. But look at that, isn't it cool? We have those beautiful buttons on there. I remember that punch and some of that paper and these polka dots. So yeah, it was a beautiful card, Gwen. This one I got from Kelly Atchison. Kelly is my upline and I was in the top 10 for the month of July. So she sent me a congratulations card. This one features the hand penned paper 
uh, along with the scallop contour dies. So that was pretty. Hi, Wendy Krueger. And then last but certainly not least, you guys, this is from Elaine Rebeck. I love, you can't, oh, let's see if I can get it to go. This is, it's like fuzzy on the top and it's full of glittery sparkles and they're so shimmery. I don't know if I can get to see it in the light, Elaine, but it's so pretty. She's got just soft, delicate stamps in the back. Elaine, I think you are, you're watching. You could tell us how you made this fuzziness on here. It kind of looks like a dryer sheet, but it's not. It's kind of cottony. And so it's so pretty. Hi, Shannon Kemp. And so that's a card I got from Elaine. So very, very pretty, you guys. That's my Happy Mail that I got recently. And then I wanted just to remind you guys what's coming up this week. So tomorrow, look, watch for Tip Tuesday. Hi, Jeannie Terwilliger. Tomorrow's Tip Tuesday. Oh, tomorrow's Tip Tuesday, so watch for that. Um, I got to record it yet. <laughs> you just reminded me. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to do that yet. Oh, tech Kelly's got Technique Thursday done. But Thursday night, you guys, we have this class. It's called the Harvest Meadow class. I don't recall exactly how many I have, but it's less than five that are left. I do have openings for the in-person class on Wednesday, if anybody wants to join me in person on Wednesday. Otherwise, September 30th, this Thursday, I still have a few kits left. So I could get them put in the mail for you tomorrow if anybody wants to sign up. You can use that host code right there and you place a minimum $40 order, you get the kits for free. Just remember, it's still celebration. So if you do over 50, you get a free celebration item and your name on my board as well for the drawing. And then this one, you guys, is for October. I believe this is around the... Oh, I don't know. I haven't changed my calendars over. Let's see what day, you guys. Let's see here. I, not October 1st yet, so I can't change the date here. October 17th, I believe. This is the Let's Just Stamp. And again, this one does the Harvest Meadow or Nature's Harvest Stamp set as well. And hi, k -Wear. And so this one is free with a minimum $35 purchase, I think, if you place an order. Otherwise, it's $12 in person, $17 mailed. You can come to the in-person class with this. Diane Bogenhagen teaches this class. So, you guys, if you're ever curious about how the fees work or if you can place an order to get the card class for free, just always go to cardsbycrispy.com. Go to the events section on there, and you can play around in there and look at all the different classes that are coming up. And then I do have uh, the calendar. Yes, that's my poppy calendar, you guys. This calendar, I've been using this for a couple years, and every year I just rip this off and then I just replace the calendar. So I have one up here too. It's hard to see it behind me, but up uh, there I have one too and it's using the dandy garden. Okay, so you guys, for the monthly class for October, I've got these set too. So this is uh, another class where you can get it, uh, it free with a purchase, a minimum order of Stampin' Up! products through me using my host code. Otherwise, you can always pay the minimum fee and get the cards as well, mailed to you or in a porch pickup. So here's your class, guys. You get Halloween, Thanksgiving, and a Christmas card. So it's your holiday card class for the month of October. And you don't need a lot, you guys. I really designed these with people in mind that don't have a lot of stamps or maybe you don't feel so good about your stamping and you're still working on it because all you need is a sentiment, a sentiment, and then sentiments on the inside. That's really, that's it for this one, you guys. So a lot more die cutting intense here for that one. So, um, okay, we're doing the ink, paper, scissors, and I might as well share some cards with you tonight. We are doing ink, paper, scissors, which features Blackberry Beauty. And I just want to show these cards to you as long as I have them right in front of me. Hi, Terry Costin. Hi, Kathy Paul. Uh, these are just some samples, you guys, of cards using the bundle suite that we're featuring tonight for class. And so this is, you guys, I do, I'm doing a fun folds at the end of October. And this is the style of a fun fold that we're going to be doing. I call it, hi, Melanie Foy. I got your cards today for um, the customer swap. <laughs> so, you guys, this is, a, I call it a bay window card because it looks like a bay window to me. And so, th not this card, but this layout is what is going to be one of the fun folds for later in October. So, that one was made by a fellow stamper, uh, Catherine Anderson. And then... These other three here too, I believe, are all Katherine Anderson. Uh, so I just wanted to share you guys, we're doing this class tonight just to give you some more inspiration and ideas for this suite of products so that you never run out of ideas, right? <laughs> 
Here's another one that's kind of more fallish with the colors, with the curry and the Cajun craze and the Mary Merlot. This one really is awesome because it features the, the, the gold shimmer paper, you guys. It's embossed with that time-worn embossing folder. And then she used some of the little elements from the Ephirma pack. Ephirma pack. You guys, I, I, I don't remember. <laughs> I get corrected all the time, and I'm okay with that. This, <laughs> these are from Jay Shante. She made these for a swap that I was in with her. And so just some more ideas for the Blackberry Beauty. I did showcase some of these during a swap card showcase, but this way it keeps them with the class as well. Hi, Judy Bobo and Pam Newhauser. All right, let's see what this one is from a Ruth Bingle. And it opens like that. A reminder to never forget how much you mean to me and so many others. Ephemera. That's it. <laughs> Ephemera. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, I'll save these two out because I want to show you. I made those. It does help. But hi, Kathy King. That definitely does help. But I'll tell you, I still don't remember it when I have to think about it. But I always want to say ephemera, but it's not. It's ephemera. Okay, I got it. Ephemera. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> I have to just laugh, right? <laughs> Hi, Zaina. Hi, Bonnie Kelly. So here's another card, you guys. So we featured for ink, paper, scissors. Or the mystery card we featured was the Blackberry Beauty as well. So that was another sample for you guys to look at. Okay. So I wanted to go through that, and then as long as I have everybody's attention, <laughs> I'm gonna put a little. I'm gonna throw a little, um, little, uh, a little seeds in here. <laughs> Come get. Can I? Can, came to get your host code. Okay, I'm gonna flip down really quick, Judy, and I'll let, have you do the so you can see the host code. Host code's right here. The R J W B Z E F S. Hi, Millie. But just always remember, you can get my host code by going to my website. If you click on either the events tab or the about me, or the about me, I've got the host code there with a link. So you can always get that. So, but as long as I have you guys, I don't know if you know, it's getting to be the end of September. It's actually September 27th today. And the last day of the month, the quarter, and the Stampin' Up! year is actually September 30th, which is this coming Thursday. Hi, Lisa Sharkey. Uh, it was a fun weekend. Yes, it, it was. Very, very fun. So that means I have Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday. I have three solid full days left to do what I can do <laughs> to make um, to make it happen with the rest of the Stampin' Up! year. And I've worked my, my, my butt off <laughs> um, working on providing lots of classes for you guys, sharing my love of stamping, sharing myself with my team, and just trying to inspire and create as much as I possibly could. And so I'm going to throw one last thing out there. If there's a great celebra celebration promotion going on, it ends on Thursday. And so if anybody's looking to place an order yet to get some free celebration items, um, you can get some classes for free. Like So with the minimum order, you can pick a class and get a class on top of getting a celebration item. You get your name on the board. So any last sales that you guys want to do, just know any orders that you place between now and Thursday, well, and into next month, but anything that you place for orders this month uh, can go for classes, free classes that are available with a, a minimum purchase for the month of September and October. So I've got a Fun Folds class in October. There's an October monthly there's the cutest Halloween class. I have some of the Harvest Meadow left for this class or for this week. You guys, I even have some Beauty of the Earth. So if you really like that and you did it already, but you want to do another one and place an order, I still have some Beauty of the Earth left and some Let's Just Stamp classes from June, wait, from July and August. So any orders that you guys want to place to help support me and help me finish strong with the Stampin' Up! year, I would so greatly appreciate it. Um, yes, Mary, you can definitely get my class. Um, oh no, is it freezing? Let's just see here. I froze and I might be on my house internet. Let's just see really quick. I'm in the hive. Okay, so I don't know why I froze. Interesting, interesting stuff here. I was doing so good without the freezing. <laughs> so yes, Mary, you can get, hi Deb Norman, um, you can get my class. So Mary, reach out to me. When I flip my camera down, all you have to do is send me an email 
or you can text me or call me and we can figure out which class you'd like and make sure you get your host code in and entered before you submit your order with Stampin' Up. Um, you guys, I know that some of you are demonstrators and you still place orders with me and I so appreciate that. It helps support me and what I do and um, for my customers that support me, you guys, I always truly appreciate every order that I get. It helps me keep going with the designing and preparing and crafting and creating and inspiring you guys. So um, yeah, I saw that dub. It was freezing on and off. Um, mine froze slightly, but I'm back on track. So the other thing too, that as long as I have you guys for tonight, um, the, the other thing with celebration is that there's also a promotion for if you want to join Stampin' Up. Um, if you love stamping, if you don't have a demonstrator already that you're working with, um, or if you feel inspired or in, um, inclined to want to be on my team, the Be Happy Stampers, and join my amazing community, I would love for anybody to join me and my community of stampers. Everybody is welcome to join me, and I would open, I would welcome you with open arms to the Be Happy Stampers. And I wanna just uh, show, shout out where you guys can go. If you go to my website here, cardsbycrispy.com, there's a link at the top of it that says join the fun and you can read everything. You guys, you don't have to do what I do. You can be a discount shopper and just shop for yourself and maybe your friends and family would shop with you, but there's two options and you can run a small business and make a little extra cash or you can be a discount shopper. They're both um, very viable uh, as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So I have here, I didn't, I'm not gonna, you guys can't see it. It's too much small font, but Basically, when you read everything and you go down to the bottom, there's a join now button. And I would love to have you join my Be Happy Stampers. Um, joining Stampin' Up! and joining my team would be amazing. And then just now during celebration through September 30th, there's 12 different bundles that you could add on to your starter kit for free. And they're out here. They're, you can find them on my website. If you go to cardsbycrispy.com and go to the newsletter section, I have this flyer there. And so you can see all that. Honestly, just reach out to me. You guys, I'm available if you have questions. I seem like a very busy person, but that's because the alternative isn't good. <laughs> I don't sit still very well. So um, I'm, a, I'm always busy, So, <laughs> but I make time for everybody. <laughs> so, so just reach out if anybody has questions. I'm here to help you guys with whatever you need. <laughs> Crafting related, I should say. <laughs> Probably not with life choices, but I, I think I could help with that if you needed to as well. <laughs> Hi, Brenda Wood. Woohoo. Hi, Kathy back. Okay. Um, oh, Ma Penny has my Mario cards all prepped. Just need to put together. Awesome. I'm so excited to get them. Oh man. So don't put a year on those cards. Um, what I was wondering, Penny, as long as I have you. Hi, Sue Beasley from Australia. So Penny, I know that on that Mario card, you have a year, like uh, you had like an age, I think a seven or it was something like that. I didn't know if there was a possibility of putting one of the mushrooms on there, the Mario mushroom one up. <laughs> um, so whenever Tyler and I baked or not baked, but like cook together and we use mushrooms, he started this many years ago where he would save some of the smallest mushrooms and leave them whole versus slicing them. And so whoever gets that part of the dish that we're baking, we tell each other, well, you got the one up. You need to grow because like a mushroom makes you big. And so that's always our little joke is with the mushroom. And it's like, oh, it's a mushroom. <laughs> so yeah, so if you can figure out a way to put a mushroom on that corner, that would be phenomenal. <laughs> oh man. Oh, <laughs> okay. So yes, <laughs> mushrooms are awesome. All right. So, um, so back to business, you guys. So signing up to be on a Be Happy Stamper would be amazing. And I honestly, I have two people on my team who would promote, would keep silver. There's one person who would keep silver status and one person who would promote to silver if they had somebody join their team. And so by joining their team also means that you're joining my team because their promotion also helps me in my ranking with Stampin' Up! at the end of the Stampin' Up! year. So if anybody feels inclined to want to help somebody promote within their Stampin' Up! Um, team, just reach out to me. I'd love to help these girls. And I've talked to them already, and they've done their searching, and, and they're not so sure that they'll get anybody the last few days. And I said I would help them see if we can find somebody. So you guys, um, it's, it's not hard <laughs> to sign up and to go through the process. And then from there, you just... You just go with it. And basically, you don't have to worry about anything. You basically get a 20% discount for the first um, 
quarter that you're in and then the first full quarter after that and then you see where it takes you there's no um re i mean there's requirements if you want to keep with it but there are no requirements if you choose not to so um hi marcia so anyways th uh, the only reason i went so de de in depth with that is because it's it's like three days till the end of the month year and quarter <laughs> so uh, oh yes there's a great mushroom from the snail bundle patricia said so that's so exciting okay so we're doing ink, paper, scissors tonight. It's featuring the um, Blackberry Beauty Suite. And you guys, I've been doing this class since April. So April, May, June, July, August, September. So I just figured out what I'm gonna be doing uh, for this class. Um, I have been keeping track of everybody who's been taking this class from the very beginning. I have a spreadsheet. You guys, I'm a spreadsheet person, queen, I should say. And I have everybody's name and I have all the classes down the other side and I put a one in there when you guys register. And hi, Kathy Groves. And so what I've decided is for, I'm going to run this class like a card club and I will manage it. I will track it because I have a spreadsheet. So how I'm going to do it is if you, and I decided this a little late because now it is six months already going into. So like technically some people have taken this class six months in a row without fail. And so what I've decided is it's going to be run like a club. So because it's a product-based class, because you get embellishments and a ribbon and within the next few months, I'm going to tweak it and add some designer paper to it as well. And so after six months of consecutively taking this class, I will be throwing in some free products into your um, go, your bag that you get from me, your package in the mail. And I haven't figured out the value yet um, for it because it will be changing once I add designer paper. But for those people who have six months in a row or will be getting that next month, you can come to expect that, that you will just get some happy surprises of Stampin' Up! product when you hit six in a row. So I came up with that this weekend. One of the things that I got out of my creative convention Hi, Mary Ellen Ryan from Montana. And then Melanie said she took the pansy ink paper scissors. It was awesome. Awesome. Um, yes, and Mary's from Jericho. Beautiful. You guys, we had some gorgeous weather, um, not only in Michigan this weekend, but in Wisconsin. It was just, it was 81 degrees when we were driving home through Milwaukee yesterday. I was like, wow. And that was at six o'clock. And today was just beautiful. So I hope you guys had some good weather <laughs> where you guys are too. So for this class, for those people who are registered for this as of today, I have 26 people who are signed up and just know I do have some extra classes left. So if you guys are watching this now or in the next week or so, just know I have 10 left. And if you decide, oh my gosh, I wish I would have gotten this class, I can help you make that happen. So it's still available. Uh, so I have Leslie McMinn, Deanna Stell, Sandy Wicklander, Angela Knutson, Kathy Dali Nagari, Mary Carls, Faye Gabby, Gwen Petrasek, Jennifer Jones, Cheryl Taylor, Brenda Wood, Julie Bierschbach, Gloria Rosland, Jeannie Parker, Naughty Nancy Stormer, who is having a naughty birthday today. I'm sure it's not too naughty, but <laughs> Naughty Nancy's having a birthday. So happy birthday, Nancy. Uh, Diane Bogenhagen, Carmen Melendez, Lila Erickson, Deb Norman, Arliss Knoop, April Drain, Patricia Settle, Judy Kruger, Karen Wetstein, Shannon Kemp, and Feline Mays. So you guys, when we get all done, I have 26 names. We're going to remember to do a door prize drawing, and one of you will win a door prize from me for attending class tonight. So that's exciting. So help me remember that, you guys, when we get to that point. Oh, Deb said that she had 80 today as well. Hi, Marsha. So, yeah, so a bunch of you guys are here with me tonight, and that's awesome. And I'm looking forward to stamping. And it's so crazy, you guys. If you're worried about stamping when you get kits from me, you don't have to worry about it with this kit so much because there's really not a lot of stamping that we're going to be doing tonight. There's Every card has stamping on it, but it's, for the most part, sentiments and some foliage. So we're going to be using the ephemera pack <laughs> for the most part tonight. So um, I'm going to flip down and show you guys where the suite can be found in the catalog. And so if you're looking for any more supplies, some of the stuff is currently on back order. So just know if you try to order it, it may show on, um, that it's on back order. Um, for the most part, I think everything allows you to add it to your cart and it'll ship it once it comes back in stock. Rarely does the, do they turn the item number off. Once they reach a thousand um, units of a product that are on back order, then they shut that off so that they don't have such expensive shipping because of the back orders. So, all right, 90 degrees in Montana. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, so let me flip down, you guys. I'm gonna show you where we're at. This is absolutely one of my 
favorite sweets in the mini catalog, and I don't know if you guys can figure out why, but maybe you might guess it because it has purple in here. Um, Linda, you did, but wait, you did, but I don't, yes, you did. We just looked at it today. So you did, it, you did. <laughs> okay. I, you know what? Okay. I gotta tell you, Linda, I just sent you a little piece of paper today that said you signed up for it, but we are consolidating. So the reason I missed writing it on my sheet, so I have you down here, you're number 27, but the reason you don't have your kits is because we're consolidating all of your classes and we're shipping everything together after the MS benefit. So you're very right. We looked at it. BB means Blackberry Beauty. So thank you for helping me to add you on here. So you are definitely, you're definitely on the list. Okay, so good call. You guys, Sometimes I forget things <laughs> to write things down. And everything that I do with ink, paper, scissors is in an Excel spreadsheet versus my handwritten paper. And so it's like I got to make sure I remember it when I'm at the computer. So, Linda, you're exactly correct. So I really appreciate you telling me that. So perfect. Now we're back on track. Okay, yes, Shannon is so correct. Of course, it's because of the purple. So hi, it's Jolene Shry. Um, so you guys in the suite, there is a bundle. So it's the beauty of tomorrow stamp set and dies. We'll go through the dies here. I actually keep mine on a magnetic sheet and I have them front and back so that I don't use two magnetic sheets. I just put a little guy on the back here and almost all of the dies got used between all four of the cards. Um, yep. I'm going to ship them all together, Linda. You bet. Okay. And then, so that's the bundle. You can get it, the stamp set and the dies separate, or you can get them with a 10% savings and bundle. So then there's also designer paper and gold shimmer paper. You guys, this is why I love this suite. Oh my goodness. So these are the colors. Hi, Susan Reed. So yes, they are awesome. They're gold foiled on one side and then they've got a complimentary color on the other side. And you guys, when I worked on these cards, you're going to be sad with me because I used like this side, this side, <laughs> I used that side. I didn't use the gold foil side. So I'm going to make it really hard for you to put glue on the gold foil. And I'm sorry for that, but that's how it, it worked for this. <laughs> that was hot. Hi, Adam. <laughs> Happy birthday early. Adam's birthday is tomorrow. He's going to be, I think, um, Adam, how old are you? You were born in like 1952. No, I'm just kidding. I work with Adam. He's not getting that old. <laughs> but he told people once that I was like 70. And I'm like, no, I'm not or something like that. But <laughs> there's the gold shimmer paper. And so you guys will see that more in detail on the cards when we get to working on them. The other thing that's part of this suite is the gold shimmer um, ribbon. So it's so pretty. This is my favorite ribbon in the mini holiday catalog. Oh, I know, Penny, you died when you turned the paper over. Yes, I, I hate having to glue foil. I absolutely do. So the other thing that's part of this is the ephemera pack. And so that is what was in your goodie bag, you guys. So let's look at what you guys got from me as part of your... Um, <laughs> I am not 70, Adam. You are so... You guys. So we Adam, have a good night too, Adam. Adam and I went to Schwartz's with our whole co uh, co-worker group. And I'm from the Holy Land, which is like the Johnsburg, Marytown, St. Peter, Mount Calvary area. And this little restaurant is where I used to work when I w was in high school. I used to wait tables and was a, a, a hostess. And he told somebody I was born in like 1946 and they believed me. They believed him or it was 19 something. And I'm like, yeah. So anyways, that's our little, little joke. Hi, Randy Schultz. <laughs> okay. So you guys, in your kits that you got from me, you got this ephemera pack. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are enough pieces in here for you to do two classes, actually. If you want to make yourself some more card bases and mats, you could actually make two. So you got a whole pack of the ephemera pack. And then you got a little bag here. In the bag, hi, Kay Warren. In the bag here, you guys have a piece of the linen thread. So I remembered it this time. I'm so excited and happy that I remembered to put your linen thread. Two of the cards will need that. And then what else is in here is a pack of gild, um, a strip of gilded gems. So this suite doesn't have any embellishments with it. So what I did is I cut everybody a strip of the gold or the gilded gems. And so there's nine of them for three of the cards. 
You guys also will have a piece of basic white. This is enough. There's two cards that you need to use this for. That's why I put it in the goodie bag. Hi, Colleen. How are you tonight? Hi, Latokia. So that's why I put it in the goodie bag so that you wouldn't use it for one card and throw out the rest of it. So this is for two cards. You guys have a whole roll of the gold shimmer ribbon. And you guys, both of these two items are on back order right now. So just so you know, if anybody's looking to get this class from me, I have a few spots available yet that if you guys want to, you would get the goodie bag and the four card kits is what you have here. So you'll have four card kits in your goodie bag. Okay, so this was this one is available. I'm gonna put everything back in here so I don't forget anything or lose it. Hi, Bobby from Michigan. Okay, so there's that. And then this needs to go back in here and a little bit of ribbon. So that's what you guys have in your goodie bag for those that signed up to do the class with me. Uh, I'm doing good as well. Okay, so then I wanted to show you guys really quickly. These are the four cards we're gonna make tonight and we're gonna walk through them one by one. But I wanted to show you guys, I did two swap cards so I can get these off the table here. So these cards use the ephemera pack, but I was given the task of doing two swap cards using this suite of products. And so what I had to do is I only had two of these and they were for this class. I made basically the same card but I embossed that gold leaf around the edge here and basically made it the same way, but I improvised. This one, I didn't have enough of the tags because the tags and the owl are part of the ephemera pack. And so what I did on here is I put the little bird on here and I embossed gold and I used the tailored tag die. So I basically made similar cards, but in this case, I had other product I could use instead of having to dive into my ephemera pack. So I just wanted to share that with you guys too. Hi, Gail. Yes, these cards are so pretty. That just, I, I had so much fun making these. So that's what we're going to go through. Which I'm going to save the owl for last, you guys. I love owls and I love this acorn one. And not that I don't love these, but <laughs> I love those. I like to save those for last. <laughs> so let's work on this one first. Hi, Kathy back. Hi, Carol. Okay, so you guys. What you're going to have to do, maybe this is what we should do first, because I don't want things to be too confusing with this ephemera pack. Maybe what we need to do is have you guys open, where did I put my ephemera pack? So right here. So what you guys were going to, for those doing the class, I think what we might want to do is grab out our pieces so that you don't, um, so that you don't confuse anything. Hi, Kelly Liam. So what you guys, I'm going to lay these out here and I'm gonna take them out of the plastic so you don't have any sort of glare going on. And we're gonna pull out the pieces uh, from the ephemera pack, ephemera pack right away so that you guys don't confuse anything. So I already made, you guys, this was my mystery card from the other night. I think that can go in the garbage now. <laughs> so, so I've already used one set of everything and I have a few things left, but this sheet right here, you guys will have two of these sheets. And so, you can pop out your pieces with me so that we make sure we have everything accounted for. So this, the cinnamon cider card, it uses this leaf piece with the acorns hanging. So that's where that comes from. This owl is also on this die cut sheet. So the little owl will go with this card. And then this one, this is the most confusing one I think you guys are gonna find is because it's a lot of background foliage stuff going on. So this one over here, this piece right here is part of this card. And then this piece also goes with this card. And I know you can't see it because it's hidden on the inside. But it is it is on this card right here. Okay, so pull out those two pieces. This little doohiggy guy is part of that. I don't believe I use this anywhere. So you guys, this is extra. This is also extra. So you have extra pieces here that you can use for something else down the road. Okay, you also have here, this frame is part of this piece right here. And what you're gonna do is pop this out of here and you end up with this frame. So this is where the frame comes from, okay? So there's nothing else on here that you need. So you guys, this is extra. Create some beautiful things with these extra pieces. And oh, thanks for sharing, Marsha. And then let's keep going here. There's a, uh, a sheet that looks like this. There's actually two sheets that look like this. So grab one of them. You're gonna need this long, skinny tag 
that is for this card here. And then we have this gold leaf right here. I tucked him in there. <laughs> it's like I've tucked him into bed. So you gotta be careful with this guy. He's a little bit delicate and I don't wanna I don't wanna rip him. Whoa. Let's see here. So this little leaf, now it's kind of hard to see, but there is a leaf right there. And that's where this leaf comes in. So he's there. Now on this one here, some of these gold leaves go in here. You guys are going to build your own floral bouquet. And I'm going to prep you with the pieces. And if you decide it's too much, you don't have to use them all. But I'm going to pull out this guy too. He goes on that side. And then there's a tag over here. So that tag pops out. And that goes with our owl. And what's left here? Oh, I kind of squishered him. He's extra, I think. And then this one, I believe, is extra too. So you guys, you've got some extra pieces that you can use down the road. What I would do is pop that tag out. It's extra. Like this then to me is garbage, but you might find a use. Some people might actually take that and cut it out and make a border for a tag. And then... I think that's about it. So, oh yeah, see here guys, this was what was extra. All this stuff was extra that I didn't use that from my sheets. So you guys, there's gonna be, I know Deanna Stell loves a challenge. Hi Lisa. Um, so she loves to use other, everything up, you guys. Instead of sitting here with all these pieces for years and years and years, she's challenged herself to use up all the bits and parts so that they're not sitting here. <laughs> Put them into cards, get them used up. So like here too, we could pop that out right away. Get that sheet. You can honestly, if you want, throw it away, be done with it. And like these guys too, you could pop everything out and just start creating. So I hope that makes it so it's less confusing for you guys. Um, what what's going on here. So I've got my parts here, my parts here, parts here, parts here. So we're going to line these guys up so that they're out of the way. And we're going to go back to starting with this guy. So we've got here our tag. We've got that piece and we've got our foliage here. And so for the stamps on this one, I tried to stick with all of these cards. I tried to keep it in the family of the stamp set. So I tried to use all the sentiments for this. Now, if you don't have the stamp set, you guys can definitely make these cards without having the stamp set. I, I promise you. Just find yourself a long, skinny sentiment, and that's what's going to go on to this tag here. So I've got that already set up, and it says some people are just likable. And then on the inside, it says you're one of those people, and that's not a stamp. That's actually this die cut right here. Okay, so let's grab that kit first. Let's see where my kits are. They're over here. So that's this guy. So what you'll have in your kit for this card is a piece of Blackberry Bliss. The Blackberry Bliss is five and a half by seven and a half. So five and a half by seven and a half, it's scored at four and a quarter, which is gonna make this, it's a traditional A2 size card, and it's gonna be horizontal. So just remember that when it comes time for stamping your inside. So you have a piece of designer paper that's one by five and a quarter. So this, you guys are gonna be happy with me. <laughs> You're gonna not have to cover up the gold shimmery. So that's awesome. Oh, I already have my tag. Oh, that's my tag, haha. <laughs> okay, so you have a piece of white, which is your four by five and a quarter. So that's gonna be for your inside. And then you have, oh, that's where that went. Okay, so the gold shimmer is uh, three inches by five and a quarter and it's embossed with the painted texture embossing folder. So that's really pretty. There's a top and a bottom. You can see that that's definitely the bottom. And then that's the top. That's gonna go on the section up here. And then you guys, from your kit, I had a little piece of white paper. Uh, that is by the magic of TV. Mine is gonna be done here for me already. But like I'll show you really quick here, this white piece of paper that you guys have in here. What I did is I took the stamp from the set and you're gonna stamp that. Don't do it like right in the middle. Kind of make yourself, leave yourself a little room, put it off to the side like this. And you're gonna stamp that in the ink color called Cinnamon Cider. Um, that is one of the ink colors that looks, um, a lot of people have a hard time with this color, <laughs> but it is Cinnamon Cider. And so that's what I stamped this in. So for you guys, um, with this particular class, I go on the premonition that if you don't have the dies, um, that means you probably don't have the stamps and you'll find something else to use in its place uh, and that you don't need the die cut. And if you just buy the stamps, 
then what you'll have to do is fussy cut this out. And in all honesty, if you look at this, you can see it's tucked back here. It just adds some extra texture. If you decide you don't want it, you don't even have to put this piece in it. Like let's say you didn't get this stamp set, you can live on with this card not having it if you so choose. <laughs> okay, so let's get a little bit of our stamping done. So on this card, it's just going to be the sentiments. So we'll set this stuff over here. Now, Blackberry Billis or Rich Razzleberry? Honestly, you guys, they could be either. If you don't have one and you have the other, use whatever you have or a dark purpley color like this. It doesn't necessarily matter. Um, it's just a dark, rich purple is that we're using. And um, I think in this card, I use Rich Razzleberry. I probably did that in all of them. Uh, when you go to ink up though, you guys, you don't get it double-sided. There's only gold foil on the one side here. So you get one shot to make that work. So I would highly recommend you guys to practice. Ink up, ink up, ink up and then practice on a piece of scratch paper and see how you like it. Now, I noticed on here, you can see that the uh, bowl goes down, but that's perfect because your actual corner here dips down. It looks straight to me. <laughs> so what I'm getting at is if you don't like the way that you stamp this, you're gonna have to either grab the other one that's in your kit or flip it over and not have the gold. So I'm going to kind of hover over this till I think I get it where I want. And then don't be afraid of it. Just stamp straight down, straight up. Try not to rock it too bad so that you don't get that halo. And let the ink marinate. Once you get it where you think you got it, be good. Okay? So that's the some people are just likable. And then let's just set that right there. The inside says that you're one of those people. So that one says, I'm here for you. This one says, you're one of those people. So I'm gonna again practice on here just to see if it looks straight. I'm going to remember that I have a piece of DSP at the bottom. So I'm gonna stamp it a little bit closer to the top so that there's a little more room for writing a verse. If you guys hate writing or don't wanna write, you could stamp it down a little bit further. That's okay. And then here's the other thing that you might wanna take into consideration is this thing is gonna be over here. So knowing that now, I might just move this over a hair. So flip this like that. And then maybe I might just go to the right hair like that. So that there's a little room over here for my flower. So it centers it a little bit better. I didn't remember that <laughs> until after I did it. Okay, so really that's it for what I have for stamping on this particular card. So we can get glue happy and assembly happy. So first thing is let's flip this over and we can flip this over. So what we found with this gold shimmer paper is you do have to be careful where you put your adhesive. If you put the adhesive in line with where the white is, you won't see it. If you put your adhesive where it's kind of not white, you're gonna see it through the edge. Um, you're gonna see it through it. So we, we are gonna be strategic about where we place our glue on here. Uh, and know that wherever you have stuff covered up, that will be covered, so you don't have to worry about that so much. So in this case, I'm pretending that this is gonna be my left side, so I'm gonna put it right there because it's gonna get covered up with flowers. But now on this side, I gotta be more strategic. And so that's where I'm going to maybe put the glue right where the lines are and not all over, but like right there, there's a little line. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking. So when you put this on, try not to smear it all over the place, like get it centered nice, and then you're just going to set it down. So what happened is where that glue is, it looks more pronounced. So, I mean, you can't see it because that's the where the embossing folder is, but over here you can kind of see those lines up and down, that's what you would see with the glue. But again, we're covering that up. So then this guy is going to go, hi, Susan. This one's gonna go over our white piece on the bottom. And I'm lining up two edges nicely. And then I'm going to definitely flip this over. If your designer paper is a hair long, just trim it off. 
And then what you can do is put a little adhesive on the back of this one, and that will go on our inside. Oh man, you guys, you're thinking, how are we gonna get that flower? This is exactly what I did too, it was an afterthought. Okay, so you can see that I can wiggle it down a little bit because my line of glue was only there, but that's up too high. So what I'm gonna do, <laughs> you guys, if you're watching and you're doing this at home later, you could have glued your flower down first. But if you do what I just did, it's still going to work because I have, I have about a quarter good inch in. So now what I can do is put a little bit of glue around that and he'll still tuck in there. So there you go. So now we've got this really pretty inside with a focal image that's not even stamped. It's just part of the die cut. Okay. So there's that so far. Now you can see here what's happening is it's drying, right? So we're going to put some embellishments there. Um, and then our tag is going to go there and we're going to be incognito with that, <laughs> but that that's okay because that's completely going to be covered up with our flowers. Okay. So let's prep our tag really quick. So you guys are going to have to grab a little bit of the gold ribbon and cut off maybe about four inches. Um, um, Erica, this is Tombow multi or a mono liquid glue. You can get it through me through Stampin' Up. If you go to, this is really important, you guys. <laughs> it's my favorite adhesive in the world. I use it for almost everything that I possibly can except for ribbon. If you go into the catalog, Erica, on page 167, or there's an online catalog if you don't have a paper one, but it's right here. It's called uh, 14 Multipurpose Liquid Glue, page 167. It's $4. Um, for the bottle. And so that's a really good deal. You get lots of cards made with it. <laughs> so you guys are going to cut yourself about maybe that much ribbon and you're going to weave it through. And that was probably a lot, you guys. I bet you could have gotten by with about three inches of ribbon. If you have a hard time poking it through with here, you could use your pokey tool, but I try to bend a little bit and then get it started. And what we're going to do is we weave that through like that. You're very welcome, Erica. And for this... What we're gonna do, you guys have about eight inches of ribbon thread. You need it for two cards. So this is where if you had a buddy, it would be awesome. But if you don't have a buddy, you just have to kind of wiggle around until you get, you're just gonna be tying the end of, Kathy King, this kit is $30 mailed. So it's $25 for porch pickup, or it was $30 for mailed. So, and I have some left. So this then, I'm gonna be trying to be conservative with my twine because I wanna save some for the other card. Hi, Vicki. And I made my tail really, really short because I'm being very conservative with it, but I really wouldn't have needed to be. But all I'm doing is tying a knot here so that that keeps the ribbon closed over there. And then for now, I'm not gonna trim it. I'm gonna leave it whole until I'm ready to trim it. Oh, Latokia would like one, awesome. Okay, so Latokia, I'm gonna write that down. Oh, you know what? I can be smart about this because we'll get you in on the drawing then too. So Latokia is on here. Oh, Kathy King too. Awesome. You girls are awesome. Thank you. Okay. So now we've got that ready. So let's look at our, <laughs> you guys put your floral hat on now. Okay. This is, a, I'm going to put it, I'm going to set it on here so you can see how I did it. This guy was here. Oh, Penny Powell too. Awesome. All right. I got you down, Penny. Okay, so this one is, you're very welcome. So this guy will go here. And then I've got this gold one is off to the side here. Something like that. And then this guy, I did cut him apart, okay? So if you look at it, it doesn't look like it's all there. I actually put some of it, like I cut it apart. So don't be afraid to cut pieces apart. Or if you do want it whole like that, you can do that. And then this guy. You can see I cut him apart. Like, so this is when you're a florist, you r make your floral arrangement however you wanna see it. So this guy was up here, and then I've got this one down here. And now, if this gets to be too much for you, you don't have to put that all in here. But you can see this little guy here. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. There's this little guy right there. He actually comes from this one here. So I did take this and I cut it off so that I could bring this to the front. So I hope that all makes sense. And again, if you think it's too much and you don't like the way it looks, um, the bundle. So Kathy, the bundle itself 
um, if you want. So here's the thing, Kathy Beck, and everybody, if you want to get the bundle, so I'll bring the bundle in really quick here. The bundle is $50.25. You guys, you're more than welcome to buy this bundle using my host code, getting a class for free. And then you pay, you, this is a, a fee-based class. You can't get this class free with an order. This one is either $25 or $30 mailed. So you could, in essence, buy the bundle. So this bundle for 50 bucks, get a celebration item, get your name on the board, and get a different class of mine for free. Now that's the smart thing to do. <laughs> okay, so you guys, again, if you don't have the stamp set and you don't like the way that looks, you could leave that out and you could build your floral arrangement a little bit different so it's not so full. Like I just went crazy with it, just filling it up as much as I wanted. So, but I am gonna do it how I have my samples so that that's how um, you sit, guys see the picture or the card sample. So I'm gonna choose to put some dimensionals down first on here. And then I'm gonna be using a little liquid glue. So this is where I do multi-adhesive. Now I'm gonna be careful not to put any on the ends down here because the card has to flip open and you don't wanna put any adhesive on those little tails coming down. Okay, so this guy's gonna go about here. And then the next one was this guy. Remember, I already trimmed part of that off. I'm gonna pop up the top one with a dimensional, and then I'm gonna use glue for this, because you guys were putting lots of layers. So in the middle section, I don't need to, to add a lot of dimensionals, but when it comes to the things on the end, I wanna have them popped up slightly. So this one's gonna come out something like that. Hi, Mary. Okay, so that one's coming out like that. Now. This guy right here is next, and I've got him kind of off to the side. Now, this is where this stuff is so fine. Hi, Yolanda. This stuff is really fine. It's hard to put liquid glue on this because it might ooze all over on you. So this is where I will pull in my tear and tape, and I'm going to put a little section of tear and tape right under the area where my tag is gonna be, right there. And by putting that there, now I can just gently set this gold piece right where I want it to go, and it's gonna catch where the tear and tape is. I like things to be a little bit loose so they look like real. And if that's not what you like, you could always now put like a little dot of glue there and then just tack it down where it needs to go. So then there's this guy right here, and he also is gonna attach to that tear and tape, and he's coming out right about there. He's hanging out up high there. This guy is gonna come out over here now and he's gonna latch onto that tear and tape as well. Now this is one where there's enough little, there's a space behind here that's big enough for one of these small dimensionals so that can help him pop up. And then this one as well, there's a little spot where he can then attach. So we've got two things left then. We've got that flower, and then we've got this little guy. And on this one, I'm going to put a couple dimensionals as well. And then a little liquid glue right about there. That's gonna go in the middle section. So that, that empty space there, you're gonna fill that up with this pretty one right there. And then this guy will go in the middle. And don't worry about his little end like that because it's going to get covered up by the tag. So we're gonna put that kind of right in the middle of that section. And now just kind of look what's going on. Yep, that's looking good. We're gonna pull that down. So what I'm gonna do is put another piece of tear and tape right over the top. Oh, Sherry Martin wants a set. Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna put that to hold it down. And then for our tag, is gonna go over. Now this is pretty bulky here, guys. That's raised up pretty good. But over here, it's not. So over on this side, I'm gonna prep this side here with a dimensional. I am not going to worry about the middle section because that's where, um, oh, Sandy, thanks so much. She said the whole Blackberry Beauty Suite is 84.25 if you want the whole thing and then 50, 25 for the stamps and dies. Thanks, Sandy. So right here, I'm just putting the tear and tape, you know, that'll get covered up. But then over here, it's gonna be flat again. So I'm gonna pull in 
a couple dimensionals there, and that's pretty much where my tag's gonna go, but I'm gonna put one on the end here because I don't know how far out it's gonna go, okay? So again, this section is pretty raised up. You can tell there's a little bit of bulk going on right here, so I don't wanna put more dimensional right there. Then this is gonna go right over like that. And Sherry, I'm gonna write your name down here so I don't forget. Okay, now, I, you see how much extra ribbon I had there, so I could have definitely had less. Now, you see how there's a little bit of darkness that that's what happens with the glue. So you guys gotta be really careful with your glue that you don't use too much. But what we can do, you guys have in your kits, you have some embellishments. So there's three big ones, three small ones. I'm gonna put a big one there. There's three medium ones as well. So you can pick what sizes you want. So these, gold, these gilded gems go really nicely with the Black Bear Beauty because it pulls out the gold. And we just have to trim our little, the linen thread goes with it nicely too because it's got the tans with it. And then how I trim the ribbon tails, I just do the front one a little bit shorter and then I do the back one a little bit longer. And I think that that's it. So when you open it up, it matches the outside really nicely with your floral arrangements. So, you know, again, you guys, you are your own florist tonight <laughs> or whenever you make your cards. Like, if you think that's too much, you don't have to put that many. If you want more, you could add a couple more. Also, you could pull out your Stella pen and get your glitter going on. Stella's been taking too many breaks lately, so it's like we figured we better get her out, <laughs> get her working. Um, so yeah, thanks Lisa. So that's what I've got for that. It's just, it's so stunning, you guys. The camera really doesn't even do it justice with this video. It just, in person, it just, it just shines more. So, all right. So that one's the first one. That one makes you feel like if you've never been a florist, it will give you an idea of what a florist goes through, I think, <laughs> with figuring out how to put stuff together. Okay. So you guys, I had an aha moment when I found this. So I had to stamp myself another one and die cut it because I was missing one. And now it was in with this kit. So I'm glad I found it. But now I've got an extra one and that's how that goes. Okay, so you can see here, like I left these things loose on my sample. But if you guys don't like that stuff being loose, you're more than welcome to put a little more adhesive behind it and then like tack them down. So what you would do is you could just take your liquid glue bring it forward a little bit, and then just ever so lightly squeeze a little glue and that will hold it down. Oh yes, Elaine, I have a set for you as well. Yay, you guys are so good. I got, <laughs> I might get rid of all these yet tonight. I have, I believe three or four left. So, okay, so that's our card number one. And we'll set these off to the side and we're gonna go to this guy next. So you guys, on this one, it's Blackberry Bliss again. Blackberry Bliss and Rich Razzleberry both go very nicely with this suite. Uh, this one is gonna be, hi Holly. This one's gonna be your kit that looks like this. <clears throat> so in this, this has this really big die. If you guys watched my live on Saturday, there was a display that was done with the Welcoming Woods set. And I said Tyler would go ham over that specific card. And I was like uncertain about the leaves, but it's this die right here where those leaves came from. And um, Anna cut all these out for you. So round of applause <laughs> to Anna. She die cut all of these. And um, this is the gold shimmer paper. So you can kind of see it's got a little shimmeriness to it. I started this off as a four by six piece so we could get six of them out. And the die is just ever so slightly larger than the, the piece that I cut. So some of you, and I'm going to be completely honest, some of you, and most of you probably won't even notice it, but I'm, I'm going to call it out anyways. In case you get it that it's hard, let's see here if I can show it to you on paper. You might see that part of it is cut flat there and cut off. If you notice that and you don't like that, all you have to do is take your scissors and round it so slightly and you will never even notice that it was like that and it's only I think she she set it up so it only did it on one side and not both sides so 
If you do see some sharp angles like that, just take your scissors and MacGyver it. Uh, yes, so this, this die that we use, this is part of the suite. And so what you guys have is the gold shimmer. You'll have your two pieces here from the ephemera pack. You'll have a piece of vanilla that's your regular matte four by five and a quarter, and this vanilla is two by two and a half. You'll have a piece of designer paper from the suite four by five and a quarter. And then you have your Blackberry Bliss piece, which is the five and a half by eight and a half, and it's scored in the middle at four and a quarter. Okay, so what do we have for stamping? We have I Know This Day is Difficult, so we can do that. And then on the inside, let's see here, we have I'm Here For You, and then the little foliage thing going on. So we have the little foliage is in Cinnamon Cider, and then I'm Here For You is in the Razzleberry, and I know this day is difficult. So when it comes to stamping this, all you wanna do is just try to get it centered in the middle here. If you are a little bit crooked, it's okay. We'll make it work when we actually put it into the frame. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm here for you, goes on our vanilla piece on the inside. And this again, let's practice here. Okay, looking good. And then that's gonna go at the top here. Okay, perfect. And then the flower, just to change up the ink color a little bit, I did the foliage thing in cinnamon cider. And that is near the bottom. Like that. Okay, that's it for stamping on this, guys. <laughs> just a little bit. Okay, so now we can get assembly happy. Uh, we're not quite there though. Hang on, I gotta show you something, guys. <laughs> you see on here, there's a little speckle. That's not dirt, but there's speckles all over here. The picture really isn't gonna do it justice. So what is that from? That is actually from a Stella pen and an ink pad. So we're gonna splatter some Stella ink on our piece here. So <laughs> I highly recommend not having anything near you that you don't want getting full of ink. So we're gonna set this off to the side <laughs> and set this off to the side and we're gonna grab out our Stella pen. And did you see what I did? I put some ink on a block so I'm not dipping my Stella pen in the ink pad. And I'm actually gonna drip just a little bit of water onto the block and there. So this is an aqua or a water painter all it, is, it just has water in it, and all I did was just drip a little to help it. What it did is it helped spread the ink a little bit, and I'm just dipping my Stella pen in and taking my scissors as I'll, I'm gonna hold my scissors like this, and I'm gonna splatter as much or as little as you want. <laughs> but if you can see, <laughs> it went everywhere. You can see my whole white piece is full. So you just want to make sure you don't have your project right in front of you that you get it all full of ink. So you want to give that just a second to dry. And when you're done, you just take and wipe that out, the color, so that you don't have that for your next project that you're going to get ink in it. Okay, now we can keep on going. So we have our Blackberry. Hi, Charlene. And then, oh, there's Susie Stocks. Nice. Nice, thanks for joining, Susie. Okay, so let's flip this over, and that's gonna get adhered onto our mat, um, our base on the front. This guy, we're gonna put a little glue on him. He can already go on the inside. So this one will go here. So you guys, this is sad. I mean, you've got the foil on that side, but it, it's not that good of a section, so you guys don't have to feel so bad if that's what you get. <laughs> And then this one is gonna go on our inside like that. So you guys, if you've ever, if you ever have um, open space and you don't know what to do with it because it's too much, take and splatter, take and splatter to add a little texture to it. Okay, then what we have is this guy. How are we gonna put that down? I do definitely not put glue all over that. <laughs> you will learn that I love the tear and tape and I'm gonna put, a piece up there and a piece here and 
just set this in it. So there's a certain way this needs to go for it to fit. So you just, if you're uncertain, just kind of wiggle it around until you get it figured out. So that's how I have it. You could put it this way too. And then you have a little more open space down there. But I wanted a little more open space here on the bottom. So I'm going to flip it this way and get it so it doesn't go over the edge. Something like that. And then just squish it into your tear and tape. Okay, so it's okay. I like having these kind of loose like that. Now, if you don't, just put a little, little baby dot of liquid glue back there. Okay, so then our ribbon needs to go here. So I'm going to grab some more of the tear and tape. And... I'm gonna put right in the middle. So don't worry that you're putting tape right in the middle because this piece is actually gonna cover that up anyways. And so this is where our ribbon is gonna, oh man, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's gonna go back together just fine. <laughs> oh man, of rights. Okay, that's gonna go there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that little section is still gonna get covered up you guys you're never gonna know that that was ripped okay <laughs> oops <laughs> so I'm gonna just put a little dot of glue right there so he doesn't um want to come apart <laughs> poor little guy he just ripped apart <laughs> they're delicate so watch out okay so for your ribbon I'm gonna just kind of go off of this one to figure out how much oops is right Shannon <laughs> No harm, no foul there. It's all fixed. <laughs> so for the ribbon, I'm going to just set that right in the tear and tape <laughs> and bring it down, y'all, just like that. Okay, that's all I've got for the ribbon. So kind of, you can kind of eyeball and see if that is how you like it. So if you think, oh, that's a little bit too much, then what you can do is just lift this up and bring it down a little bit so it's not quite as high. I think that's a little bit better. Don't worry about the tails right now. When I cut my ribbon tails, that's always the last thing that I do. Okay, so for this, ultimately what we're gonna do is make it look like it's popped up on a frame. And so you have two options. You can use your dimensionals and like cut off the sides or these are small enough that you could put them on there. But I have some of the handy dandy foam strips, foam adhesive strips that we sell with Stampin' Up. <laughs> and you guys laughed at that that was funny I was like oops is right so I'm going to put some of these foam strips along my frame I'm gonna grab my glue scissors to do this and something like these two are gonna be perfect to go up and down this side and this side and then another little shorty there so these foam strips are slightly higher than the other adhesives, like um, these other foam adhesive sheets, but just slightly. They're great for shaker cards. Okay, so the trick with this is you're gonna peel off that backing and you're gonna hover over it until you get it straight where you want it. So let's get these guys picked off. And then we're gonna hover over that. And this is now where if you didn't stamp it straight, it's okay. You can, you can get it straight now by putting the frame on it straight, and then you can always cut the vanilla piece if you want to. So the main thing I was doing was making sure it was straight. Then what I can do is I cut this vanilla piece slightly smaller than the frame for you, so you had a little wiggle room. If you're hanging over the edge, all you'd have to do is take your scissors and trim it, okay? So what I am gonna do, because I have ribbon here, and I wanna make sure it sticks really good, to the ribbon, I am just going to put a piece of tear and tape right through the middle. And then I'm gonna do the rest with liquid glue around the edge here. And just do a combination of tear and tape and glue. Then this is gonna get set right in the middle. Like that. If you need your tails over, you can still wiggle them a little. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle with it. Now, don't worry about this little leaf thing here because I wasn't sure where exactly to put it until I got my frame down. So now you've got a little wiggle room. You can just lift this up. You see it's a little bit long. So what you can do is pull that one out. It'll catch with some of the glue. And then on this side, there's a little bit of glue. It's still not up. You can put one down on this side. So there I put the whole leaf. And then here I cut the leaf apart. You saw I put a little bit up there and I put a little guy down here. And then now squish this good. 
and there was that liquid glue that was floating around, that will catch that, and it's now it's pretty tight. But I noticed that when I put my sample card together, there was a lot of looseness going on with it. It's really secure right in the middle, but it's loose everywhere else. I like to button that stuff up at the end. <clears throat> so like in this case, I can pick this up knowing that my gold leaf is there. That's where I'm gonna put a little dot of glue back there. And so that's gonna help secure that a little. Then this one, if I wanna put a little dot of glue behind that one, it will secure that a little bit. Now, just remember, wherever you put this glue, you're gonna always, um, I always think my glue dries by, you know, it very well could. I'm gonna just put a little bit back here. I wanna be very careful not to put it so you're gonna see it so much. And then I might put just a little bit on this one. Oh, one of these guys. So that's gonna help it to be a little bit more secure on your card front, but yet give it that, the essence of like it's, like a floral arrangement, kind of like hanging off the card. Okay, so now that that's done, grab your scissors, and you have a couple different ways. I like the way that that looks with the banner on, or the, the ribbon on the end, but just to do this one different, you can see that you could do this one the opposite. I think this is the opposite, yep. <laughs> okay, so here you've got the tails going in, and there you've got them going kind of out or however you want to say it, but they're, the, they're cut the opposite. So really you can do it however you want. And last but certainly not least, you guys have some more gilded gems and you're going to put three of them on this card as well. So let's find them. If you want to use a big, so there's a big one here and then grab a medium one. I like to put the, the big and the small together and then the medium one off to the side by itself. So let's grab that guy right there and he can go there. Okay, Stella. Stella needs to come out and do her work. So what I would Stella on this card is actually you could Stella the frame. And the Stella is a glitter pen. So it just adds a little bit of sparkle to your project. And it's controlled. It's a controlled substance. She won't come off. <laughs> All right. So there you go, guys. There you've got your second card. All you need to do to make this card is literally stamp a sentiment in the middle um, that fits in that window. And then if you want, just decorate this inside however you want. So you could make this into a birthday card or a, uh, it could be a, hey, you guys, this could be a wedding card too if you have a fall wedding coming up. So, all right. <laughs> Pigeon, toad, or paddle foot. Those are the ribbons. I get it. Okay, cool. All right, so there we go. We have these two cards done so far, and we're on to the third card. And let's see here. Our third card, I like this one. This one, I just, oh, I just love the cinnamon. Like, so I'm not the biggest fan of cinnamon cider. I will be completely honest with you. It doesn't look so good to me. <laughs> Looks like poop a little bit. But with that designer paper and some of this bedazzling paper, it just, it really is pretty. And it just, with espresso, it mixes in so nicely. So on this one, you guys needed to have this piece from your ephemera pack. And then also in your kit, uh, you guys, let me show you what you got here. You have a piece of early espresso, which is your traditional eight and a half. Ooh, look at the thumbs up. You guys like this one. I love this one too. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, so you got eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Now you have your piece of white and your piece of um, cinnamon cider are both four by five and a quarter. <laughs> yeah, Laura, you're in the same boat. Like I, um, I wasn't so sure about cinnamon cider, but now that I'm using it for frog colors, I'm okay with it. So you guys, for your card kits, we did not cut the little a, the little leaves out of yours. So you won't see the holes like this, but for my sample, I did. So that, that's called paper conservation. Um, you guys also have a piece of designer paper. Oh, so that's the side you're gonna have to cover up. I'm so sorry. It's so pretty. But with this card, you really, you really need to use this piece, <laughs> that side up. And then what you'll have is this piece of white. This is die cut from the Hippo and Friends dies. And so you'll have that. Now for you guys, I was conservative with the dazzling, the dazzling demonstrators, the dazzling paper here. So what I did is, um, <laughs> Quinn's not a fan of it either, but she loves this one. Good, good. So what I did for you guys is everybody got 
um, I cut, uh, I think Pat cut these. And what we did is uh, we went like this. So I cut one piece and then everybody got half. So, so basically when you cut that in half diagonally, it gives you two. So that's how I did this. So everybody's got a piece that looks kind of like this, except for you're not missing this little chunk. And I used scraps to cut your little leaves. So you'll have one of those. And then you have a bunch of these leaves. You'll have um, that size. You'll have that one and then two dazzling ones. So that's what you guys should have on your kit. I wasn't so sure if I needed extras for mine or not, but it looked to me, it looked really good with that. Now, I threw in here in your kit, in this specific envelope for you guys getting this card, um, this class, there are three copper um, brushed metallic dots. So that's specific to this card. You're not gonna use gilded gems on this card. Uh, this is embossed here with the timber embossing folder. Again, hippo and friends dies. And then these little leafy things are from, these leaves come from this set. So that's so they're so pretty. I love these leaves a lot. All right, so stamping. We need to do this guy right here, and then we're also going to use this guy. Yes, thank you, Anna. Anna does a great job. So does Pat with the die cutting. I love it. Um, they really help me out big time. Okay, so we need this color, and then, oh, early espresso. Let's see, you guys. I have to maybe grab, oh, I have it right here. Okay, so early espresso. So what I'm going to do first is stamp the sentiment in early espresso. So it's the changing of leaves reminds us that new wanders, oh, new wonders are just around the corner. So we're gonna stamp that and practice first and see what it looks like. Okay, the ink looks good. So that's gonna get stamped here. So you guys, if you don't have this exact stamp set with this sentiment, it's it's okay. There's The stamp is crooked, so you really just gotta get it in the white space <laughs> and it should turn out okay. So you've got your sentiment. The inside has that foliage thing going on. So what we're gonna do is we can shut that up and grab our cinnamon cider. And that's gonna go, so that one's done. We need this and then our scratch paper. So this is definitely stamped at second strength. So what you can see the, with the difference is that's first strength and then second strength. So. To do this, I'm gonna ink up and stamp off because that would be super dark over our ink. And so we're gonna grab this. And honestly, what you can do is test it. See what second strength looks like and then you can see what third strength looks like. And maybe in this instance, third strength might be my winner, winner chicken dinner. So we're gonna do first, second, come back over here. And because it's light, it's gonna be a lot softer, and it's gonna still allow you to read what it says. Now for the inside, there's nothing that matters about stamping over it, so I'm just gonna stamp it at full strength. Cause you see how dark that is? That's okay, nothing's going over. Oh, you could also do, if you wanted, move it over a hair and stamp a second one and fill it in a little bit just to make it look like there's two of them. Okay, now if you want to put a sentiment on the inside you can i don't really know you can make it um, a birthday card or a thinking of you card stamp whatever you want on the inside and let's see about getting our glue happy on so there's one other little thing that i need to tell you i don't know if you guys can see it in here but if i hold this next to it you might notice it let's see not so much but this is gold you can Maybe see that that is a hair darker. What I did is I took my cinnamon cider blend and I colored it darker so it's not so gold. So this could be a guy card because of the darker browns and the cinnamon cider. But that gold might throw you off slightly. So what I did is I took a cinnamon cider marker and just in the areas on the end where you're going to see the edge, I, yeah, so I love coloring ribbon, but I also hate what it does to my marker tips. It really kind of demolishes them if you do it a lot. And so I'm only gonna do it in the area where I'm thinking I'm gonna see it, okay? And I'm gonna test this out. 
because what it does is it's rough on them. So you can see it's darker, just a little bit darker there. It gives it more of a brown look than a gold look. And so what I'm doing is going to prep that. So it's basically only colored where you're going to see it. So I didn't do the whole ribbon with it. Okay, that's a cinnamon cider blend. It's an alcohol-based marker, and so it's permanent, and it dries right away. Okay, so I think that <laughs> with all of that being done, you, I'm going to make sure i gotta, I got to glue those on the bottom. So if you guys are at home and you're die cutting, just make sure you remember that you can die cut leaves out of pieces that are going to get covered up so you don't go and cut apart more paper so that it's called paper conservation. And so I'm going to put glue along the top, the bottom, and the sides here because I don't want to risk getting glue right in the middle <laughs> so that it goes through my holes there. So put that together like that. If you guys have it that anything needs to get trimmed, now is your time before you put it down. Now is your time to kind of trim it so that you don't have any extra overhangage of paper. <laughs> that wouldn't be good, right? We don't want over hangage and then grab your tear and tape and we're gonna put the tear and tape on the back side where the ribbon's gonna go oh you guys this was one of my favorite cards <laughs> like that I've made in a long long time like I just was so happy with how it turned out so that's gonna go so that my darker is along that there you guys can see the difference you could, it's more gold and then it's brown Okay, okay. so then we're gonna do our little sandwich with the tear and tape because I want it to be, have it adhesive where the ribbon is. And then that's gonna get glued to the uh, front of our card base along with this piece can go on the inside. So I'm gonna do, whoa. <laughs> oh, hold me on, on the floor, hang on. The tear and tape is catching me tonight with my fingers. Okay, so this is going to go here. Oh, yes. Dion, that is a good, good idea. So there is a Peaceful Deer Punch. And what she did is she grabbed some scraps that were thrown out that were big enough to do the antlers. That is a really good idea. Absolutely. Hi, Jeannie Parker. Okay, so here's our inside. That's gonna go in first. And then we've got our top mat. When you pull the cider together with this espresso because of this designer paper, that is what seals the deal with this, that cider. <laughs> okay, so what's next? We have to grab our piece here. Hi, Anna Rabidou. So what I did for this is I put dimensionals along the outside more than the middle. The middle is going to get liquid glue. So we're going to put three of them there. And then we're going to put liquid glue on the rest because we're going to end up popping this up. So I want that middle section to be a little bit flatter. Okay, so that, let's just leave that open. Okay, so this is going to, I think it, did I do the opposite? You guys, I did the opposite. Oh, man. Okay, let's see if these pick off. If they pick off, we're going to do it. That one's not. He is not going to do good. <laughs> that one will pick off. Yes, Patty, you're going to have to buy the cinnamon cider paper. That's how it goes. <laughs> I'm going to try to get this guy over here. So let's see. That goes up here. And then this guy here. Okay, so I salvaged it. <laughs> I switched my, definitely did that upside down. So that's gonna go something like this. Okay, and then let's prep this. So I have the dazzling flat and I have this popped up. So what I'm gonna do is put dimensionals all around this. So these little guys. So when I used big dimensionals, like the size that's this size, they're, they're bigger. I always used to cut them in half. And then that got to be a pain in the butt, but luckily in the interim, they came out with these little mini dimensionals. And so I started using the mini dimensionals. <laughs> and now I feel like they're too small and I wanna go back to the big dimensionals because they're so much easier to work with. So, okay, so I'm gonna prep that and put this over on the side. 
So as long as you line it up good, this should be flush on this side and you should be flush on that side. And then, because we already have dimensionals here, now what is gonna happen is we're gonna put a little liquid glue there. You can see it, just like that. And then that's going to go off to the side here. Something like that. And then you've got your leaves. So as long as we've got Stella off of her break, we're gonna Stella these leaves just to make them a little bedazzly. And I put a dimensional behind that one and this one, and I put those flat. So we've got dimensionals on the ends, and then it's gonna be a little bit of liquid glue. And that guy's gonna tuck in like that. This one, We'll tuck up the top more. I'm trying not to cover these little acorns. That's my goal, because they're so cute and adorable. Don't want to cover them up, so he's going to come up that way. And then these are going to get a little liquid glue on the back. And they're going to tuck next to the cider leaf and the espresso leaf without covering up your acorns. So I kind of like left the acorns as a focal point in the middle. Now, for you guys that have your kits, you have either too small and a big or too big and a small for your copper gems. And I think I left mine on the other side of the room. They're still over because I'm doing the Harvest Meadow class on Thursday. So <laughs> I talk so much better. <laughs> they just, so, oh, hi Debbie. One of the things that I like to do is get my labels on and then tuck things around the where the label is versus trying to attach things to my label. So, um, yes, it's a good brown. So, okay, so you guys, this is what the, I mean, it looks pretty much, I don't want to run over there unless I have to get something else, but you have three copper brushed metallic dots. So I put one up here and I put two down on the bottom and you can see them once you've got your embellishments on it just polishes off the card and it does it so yay we've got one more in the books so oh I just you know <laughs> it was all about using this die cut piece for the ephemera pack and had that piece not been in there I don't think I would have ever created this card the way I did and then having the gold shimmer ribbon, I felt it was too goldy and needed to have a little bit of the brown tint to it so it didn't look so gold. Um, so yeah, so there we go. One more done and we got my favorite one for last, the owl. So you guys, this is what we've got done so far. We've got our two blackberry ones done and we've got the cinnamon cider um, acorn oak leaves going on. All right, I will make sure that whoever wins this card, there will be embellishments on that before it gets put in the mail next week. So, all right, water break. Okay, and last and absolutely certainly not least in my book whatsoever, I love this owl. So the only way that you get this owl <laughs> is by getting this ephemera pack. And I was so sad a little bit because I thought there would be an owl stamp in here, but it's not an owl in here. It's a chickadee bird. I don't know. It's a bird. A bird's a word that's in here. And so the, I used that bird. I mentioned earlier tonight when I was showing this card, I made this card but used the bird on there instead because that's what I used for my swap card. So I was sad that there was no owl, but we make do. So in this one, you guys, it's got a belly band on top of it. So this little guy here, so this actually, so if you thought, oh my gosh, it's not centered good because it was hanging out down here, this actually is a belly band that slides up and down. And when you take it off, then that opens up and you've got your card in the middle. Oh, Penny had three baby screech owls as a teen. That's awesome. So that's what we're going to work on next. And we're going to make this little belly band to go on it. So you guys have your piece of rich razzleberry, and that is five and a half by eight and a half. Um, I know, Kathy, I wish that, that, that stamp would be so, this would be so pretty with a stamp. I definitely agree. So this is scored at, I believe it's two and an eighth from each to the end. Yep. So you have eight and a half, and what you do is you score two and an eighth from this end and two and an eighth, which gives you the four and a quarter in the middle. And so when you go to shut your panels, the first side I just flip over and go for it and burnish it. 
when I work on the other side, what I try to do is make sure that they meet in the middle nicely. So as, and if they aren't quite scored right, you can still MacGyver magoo it, MacGyver it or maneuver it. <laughs> that was like combining two words. Till, so they meet in the middle like this. So I wanna make sure they're nice and flush. And that's when I'll take my bone folder and, and score it. And now you can see that they're pretty, they come up together and they meet nicely. Uh, then I'm not gonna do the belly band quite yet. I wanna glue my strips of designer paper. The designer paper, you guys, you could pick this side if you wanted. Like if you wanted to change this one up, that one's definitely doable. That well, that that could work if you want to do that instead. And then you have the gold foil that's going up instead. But I liked that look better. And the designer paper is, they're strips of one and seven eighth wide by five and a quarter. So flip them over and then we're gonna adhere them. Sorry birds, we're flipping you over and covering you up and nobody's ever gonna see the daylight again. So sorry. So that's gonna get put on this panel. There's no up and down for this. The foliages are going every which way. You can see that they're spinning around in circles. So there's no top and bottom. And then what I wanna do is, I'm not gonna put the belly band on quite yet. Oh, look, I even put ribbon in there. Um, because I wanna get my inside glued in and I wanna wrap this around last. So you guys, do not glue this together yet. Just hang tight for that. Now I do have it scored, so it's at four and a quarter, but it's not gonna be exactly right. So this one, what you have is your piece of white. Wait, it's five and a quarter by four for your inside. This is the brushed metallic foil paper. It comes in a pack of six sheets with tan and gold and copper, and it's embossed with a time-worn embossing folder. And it's actually time-worn type, so there's actually words that you can't make out. <laughs> uh, this piece is three, I think, by four and a quarter. So three by four and a quarter for this one. You guys, so you have your other piece that you stamped and cut this out of. You're gonna have a piece left, a section. I just cut myself a little scrap, but you just need to get I'm here for you. And so we're gonna stamp that in either Blackberry Bliss or Razzleberry. It's really up to you what you wanna do, what you wanna do. And you're just gonna stamp that on that scrap paper that you have anywhere. You're cutting it apart. So it doesn't matter if it's straight or not. And then on the inside, where is our inside? Oh, I'm here for you. I know this day is difficult. Okay, so let's see here. We can do the foliage thing. So let's grab this. We might have to clean a stamp now though. So this was originally done in cider. So let's clean this. So the chamois, we also sell them from with Stampin' Up. You can get them and then the cases come from Stampin' Up as well. It's just water in them. So we're gonna do this one in Razzleberry this time at the bottom, like that. And then we're gonna pull out, I pulled one other color out, you guys. <laughs> These are the colors, this is it. I, love, I kept it to four ink colors for this class. The other one, and if you don't have soft suede, you could get by with using espresso. It really would work just fine. I just thought soft suede looked better, um, but it's like espresso would work good too. So we're doing that, and then this one, I stamped the, I know this day is difficult, so we gotta clean that though really quick, guys, because it's got Razzleberry on it. And then, in this stamp set, you might not have caught it, but one of my goals when I use a whole suite or a bundle in a class is I try to use as many stamps as possible. So I think I got all of them covered. If this is empty, yep, <laughs> they're all in box. So this little grungy, splotchy look thing, I pulled that in. So that is actually gonna be, it's back here on our tag. So let's get this stamped. I know this is a difficult day there. And then the splotchy thing. So you guys need your tag, where is it, right here. So grab your tag and you see, oh man, oh, that's okay. There's splotches back over here but they're definitely not at first strength. Cause if you saw over here, that's really dark. It almost looks espresso. So there you've got, when you get the second strength, it looks good. Not old olive. I didn't even pull old olive in here at all. So we're gonna do second, third, fourth. Stamp off, 
second. And then I'm gonna flip my stamp around so I don't have it all the same. And I'm creating this little splotchy background look. Okay, so what's gonna happen is our owl is gonna be hanging out over here. And then I'm here for you, we'll go there. That's it for stamping, you guys. We're done stamping for tonight. So these were the colors. I had soft suede, rich razzleberry, early espresso, and cinnamon cider are what we used for those inks. And the only other ink was this blend that I did for coloring the ribbon. Okay, so that's it for the stamping. Now, let's get our inside glued and put that in. Um, Shannon, I did not use old olive, so I'm not sure if that was, if you were thinking old olive for something else. But this is going to go actually in this guy. And at this point, there was no up and down to it. So now it's got up and down. Now this is where, now that you've got the DSP on here, you've got your inside, and now you're going to take this belly band. And you're going to, it's, so this card is four and a quarter, and it's scored at four and a quarter. But because you have thickness here, this is, one side's going to be good. The other side is gonna need a little assistance wrapping it around. It's gonna actually bend, not on the score line, it's gonna bend slightly past it, but not the whole eighth of an inch. And what's gonna happen is you want your open seam here on the front, okay, not the back. If you do it on the back, you're always gonna see it. If you do your seam on the front, when you attach this, it's gonna cover it up, okay? So seam on the front, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little adhesive on this end right here and then this end here so that when I shut it, I've got it on both ends, okay? Hi, Deborah. Hi, Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin. You guys don't wanna do that so tight that it has a hard time sliding up and down. You wanna make sure that it's a little loosey-goosey, okay? Not too tight. And if it is too tight, just you could back it off. So you see it, my glue wasn't quite dry. So what you could do is back it off ever so slightly and then loosen it up a little so that you've got a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, so tear and tape is next over here. And that is because we're gonna put some ribbon down. So the ribbon is gonna go from here to here and I'm gonna try to center my tape Oh, see, I cut it a little bit long. I ripped it a little long. That's all right. We're just going to rip it off here. And that's, I'll put this little bit back on to save that for later. And take that off. You're going to cut yourself enough ribbon. I'm going to cut it a hair long so I can trim my ends nicely. So grab your scissors. It's okay. You can cut a little um, over the edge. And I'm going to center this top to bottom on my belly band. And it's going to stick right to the tear and tape. Okay, again, don't worry about your ends right now. The last thing I like to do is trim my tails of my ribbon so I don't catch them on anything. Then, this is next. If you can decipher what is the top and the bottom because you can read your words, go for it. But if you can't, do whatever. <laughs> um, I did pop it up with dimensionals. And actually what I did, I used the sides of my dimensionals. I wanted to make these tracks on the sides. So... I'm gonna do, on the sides of your dimensionals, you have, it's actually not cut into dimensionals. And what I wanna do is put a track on the top and the bottom so that I'm not putting more adhesive over my ribbon. So I'm gonna use these two right here and put one up here and I'll put the one underneath the ribbon. So you could put it on top of the ribbon too if you wanted, but the ribbon is a little bit of height to it. So by putting it, you're creating like a little channel um, and the ribbon's going through your channel. Okay. So now what you wanna do is get your belly band in the center and then this is gonna get centered on your card. So is that center? So I am not a ruler person. <laughs> Can you tell? I don't measure if it's equidistant or not. I just go for it. So if you're a ruler person, grab out your ruler and center it nice. And then that's going to go. So what happens is that's going to come off. Okay. So let's put this back on though. Okay. Like that. So the tag. 
Patag is completely popped up. I think it is. Let's see. Oh yeah, I definitely popped that up. And but before we put it on, we're gonna put our little ribbon on it. Cause I just remembered there's ribbon up there. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, there's ribbon there. So we're gonna grab and do like the same thing that we did on that little tag. We're gonna put our ribbon through it, and then we're going to take the last of the linen thread and we're going to run that through it. So grab yourself some more ribbon right here. So this one's got two ribbons going on, you guys. Ribbon there and ribbon there, ribbit, ribbit. Okay, so there's a little bit that we can use and you're gonna just, I fold it in half and then try to catch an end of it when it goes through the other side. Okay, straighten it out nicely. So it's gonna go like that and then grab whatever you have left of your linen thread and tie it into a knot at the top. So there's one and you definitely want to do like into a knot so it doesn't come apart like that. Okay, so that's going to be on, on the top of our tag. Now we can put our tag down onto the brushed foil. And I have it diagonal, you guys. <laughs> That's true. So if you're a straight up and down, left and right kind of person like I normally am, you could put it on there straight like that. But I did cockeye it a little bit, just like that, just because my owl helped straighten it out a little bit. <laughs> okay, so that now, this owl is the only thing that you're not gonna like, I think, is that the owl wing does slightly go over the edge of the card. It, I, it does. And what I had to do, let's get this on here so I can show you. Hang on, get in there, little guy. Okay, so it is. Like, my little owl guy, if you're going to mail this, you're going to have to, like, tuck the owl wing because if you put it over so far, I mean, you could put it, like, right there, and then it doesn't necessarily go over the edge that's maybe what we'll do. Then he's standing more in line with the foliage and that's that's maybe what we'll do. So we're gonna pop that up then. And that works good, we'll do that. Um, this one I had it hanging over so that I had to wrap it around it. And let's see here, we're gonna move that up because we're gonna glue his foot flat. I always like their feet to be planted. So we'll put this down. Don't worry, we're gonna cut our ribbon at the end. Okay, so he's gonna hang out right like that. He's stepping on the foliage, something like that. Now, you guys, I've been doing this a little bit more <laughs> with these sentiments. You're just gonna trim this. So instead of having it in a solid line, what you're gonna do is just cut around the sentiment and just like that. And then we're gonna cut it right in the middle at between here and four. So there and there, and then that's just gonna get glued on here like that, okay? So I've been doing that a lot with sentiments, just cutting them out and putting them randomly on the card, and we're gonna use our glue for that. So you see on this card, I only put two gilded gems, but I gave you three, a lot, there's three left in your kit because I gave you 12 total. Oh, it looks so cool hanging off, but you just gotta be so careful that when you go to put it in the envelope, it won't quite fit in your envelope unless you guys use a bigger envelope, like a five by a five by seven envelope. Hi, Linnea. Okay, so then this is gonna get put down. You can kind of put them a little crooked if you like. Now, I just mentioned about the Gilded Gems. You guys have three left. I had the hardest time figuring out where do I put the other one. So I have the two up there and I really wanted to put it right there, but I thought it would make it look like the owl was pooping out a gem. So I definitely would not put it there, guys. <laughs> you could put it up here. You could put it up there. You could put it anywhere. But don't put it underneath the owl's butt because it will definitely look like it's pooping it out. So, okay. So we're going to put one there. We're going to put a little guy there. Now, if you're happy with the two, I mean, I know we always talk about you need to have three for embellishments, like odd numbers. So figure out a different spot to put that last one. Honestly, anywhere. <laughs> but just don't put it, you know, honestly, don't put it 
You don't put it like down there. <laughs> okay. So the other thing I forgot to do is I like his foot to be planted. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue right underneath his little tootsies and have it so that he's actually like secure on the tag. So, I mean, I don't know. I have the hardest time with that third gem. We're going to put it right over there, but not done. Almost done. Not done. We're going to go for our ribbon. So trim your little linen thread, the little tails off. And then I like to do the front one shorter at a diagonal. And then you can do the back one a little bit longer. I keep these generally to the same angle. And I left a little hair there. So let's get that fixed. And then these guys are at a diagonal. So I'm gonna go like that. And then I'm gonna try to keep them going the same angle. And I can tell I did them the exact opposite of my sample card. Those I had going that way. And then this one I put going this way. And actually this one, I like the flow of the tail better with that angle of the ribbon. So, okay, you guys. I think we accomplished our tasks for tonight for making our beautiful cards. Let's pull them all back in so we can see what we made. <laughs> you, <laughs> I definitely love the owl. Like he's, I love owls. He, so he's gonna be my favorite. This one's my second favorite. And then the other two I'm equally loving. So uh, they're all so pretty. When you put all of these together in the same class, it just makes for a really rich, elegant class with all that gold. Now don't forget, there's the little copper um, brushed dots that are supposed to go on that card that I didn't want to have to get up and go get. <laughs> so, all right, you guys are going to have to tell me your favorites. Oh my gosh, or your favorite, or if you say all of them, I like that too. But they're just, they're all, they were all so fun to make. <laughs> Yeah, Shannon, I definitely wish he was a stamp too, but you get two of them in one ephem ephemera pack, so you get two, and you can make two beautiful cards using the owl, and that's good. Like, it's good. And if you want to get another pack, they're going to be off of um, back order, I think, in early October. So, you guys, I have here, I think 32 people signed up now, so I have, I should have four kits left, so... For anybody that is tuning in on the replay, I always try to tell you guys, and if I forget, I it, always try to remember this in the back of your head when you guys are watching me, if you ever can't make a Facebook Live with me. So I, I talked to Carissa about this on the way over to Michigan, and she said what she loves to do is watch the video live with me so that she can ask me questions because I can see them as they come through. I try to answer them right away. And when you guys catch the replay, I don't always catch the comments afterwards. So if you ever are watching a replay with me and you have questions, uh, you can post them in here, but I might not see them because I don't generally go back and watch every video from front to beginning. And sometimes if one of my happy customers is watching along on the replay and they can answer a question, like Carissa will see something or somebody else might see something, they'll try to answer it. But you guys are always welcome to email me or text me or call me if you have questions while you're making the cards um, and you don't remember or you, you're not certain of something. So just always keep that in the back of your mind. That's why it's always awesome to watch the, the live with me, ask questions live. And then, um, then you can always, what Krista does is then she watches it again later if she needs to, when she actually is putting the cards together. So, so then you don't feel rushed and trying to feel like you have to keep up with me while I'm making the cards. So, um, so Randy likes the cider one the best. Uh, Faye loves all four, and she's putting Thanksgiving sentiments on them. That's awesome. Kathy says the owl, uh, of, but the, all of them, and then the owl. Jeannie says all of them. Okay, so you guys are liking them. That's great. I love designing. I like If I could go back and duplicate the designing of these cards again, it, they were so easy. You guys, the ephemera pack, was so fun. You just started pulling out, or I started pulling out different elements and putting them into sample layouts and they just came together so fast and so quick. Hi, Feline. We just are wrapping up Feline, but you can definitely catch the replay. We got all four of them done. And Feline, um, you should have your kits, I think, by now. They were, I think they were mailed out last week, I think. So, and it's not family dinner night tonight. <laughs> Yay. So, okay, you guys. So we're going to do a door prize uh, to see who wins the, the drawing for tonight's class. And thanks for sharing, Feline. I appreciate it. I'm trying to get this little owl leaf 
I will wing back in here. Okay, there, now I'm set. Okay, so let's flip down here. So nobody else that I saw wanted to sign up. So we're gonna do this one with 32 people. And we're gonna flip over here to random number generator. And you guys, the drawing for this these cards, so I always draw names about a week later uh, after I can see who's commented and shared the post. So we're gonna do here random, look at that, it's right there. So we have 32 people that, I'm drawing my line, my line in the sand. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, who are we gonna pick here? Generate, number 12, Julie Bierschbach. All right, girl, you're gonna be at class on Wednesday night, so you will have a prize waiting for you on Wednesday. I feel like you are one of the luckiest later ladies when this random number generator is around because I think this is like the third thing in six months that you've gotten. <laughs> so you're a lucky girl, go get a lottery ticket. That's what I have to say about that. Okay, so I also have cards from the Celebration Hoorah Rah card class that I did on the 17th, I think. Yep, that Friday the 17th with you guys. If you see these cards and you want to see how I made them via the video, go look for Celebration Hoorah Rah, and you can watch that video. It was from September 17th. Okay, so we're going to pull these cards out, and you guys can see. All right, so this was the Shaded Summer using the hand pen DSP. Brrr. All right, winner, winner is, okay, you guys, this guy, Bat, I think it's Betty, your name was drawn. And I don't know if I wanna butcher it or not, but it was Betty Wells Abderhalden Flood. You had four names. <laughs> so if you're watching, you are the lucky winner of this card that we made for Celebration Celebration. All right, winner, winner, chicken dinner. This was the card that has the little pocket that comes out here. And I am going to put this piece in with here so that it does not go to waste. It was what was cut off of right here. So use it and don't lose it. All right, Brrr, winner, winner is Kathy Larson. You are the winner of the deer card and the little lamb card here, the sheep here. So Brrr, winner, winner. Laura Sullivan, I know you were watching earlier, so I'm not sure if you're still there. I don't know if I have address for you, so you'll have to message it to me. Hi, Char. All right, my favorite of all of these four cards is, has to be this little penguin. He's so adorable, and that glimmery paper is gone now, but it's just, this one gets me. <laughs> I love this card. And you open it up, and it says, Season's Greetings, Be Cool, Be Chill, Be Merry. Brrr, winner, winner, chicken dinner is Cheryl Stancil. S, there's even dazzling on there. S-T-A-N-C-I-L. Your name was drawn for this. And even you can see the, the little critters on the back of this. So those are the four lucky winners for this. I still have these cards, you guys, that I have to go through. So if you haven't watched the Love of Leaves class yet, make sure you get in there and comment. I haven't drawn it. I think that these will be drawn for announcement on Thursday, the... 30th. I'll announce the winners for those cards. And then, um, yeah. So you guys, Kelly did the mystery card drawing last week. So in case you missed it, that drawing was last week. Um, the winners were Kathy Jackson and who was it? It was Kathy Jackson and Cindy Hutchings. You were the two winners for the mystery card. So that's awesome. You guys will have some prizes coming out when I get that all figured out. <laughs> so uh, and just a reminder, you guys, I started off a little bit uh, earlier tonight talking about it being the end of the quarter of the month and the Stampin' Up! year for, uh, for Stampin' Up! And I'm really trying to finish as strong as I can in the rankings for Stampin' Up! I work my little butt off as, <laughs> as hard as I can. Um, and I had a goal. I don't know if I'll make it, but my goal was, I was number 27 in the United States last year, and my goal was to be higher than that. And I know, I don't know if I'll make the top 10. I wasn't really thinking realistically I would, because that's... Um, that's a lot of hard work, a lot more hard work, I think. And there's a lot of other demonstrators that do a lot bigger businesses than me, but one of my team members put it in my head that maybe there's a shot. So anything I can do to, to help build that with my any additional sales that you guys are willing to give me to, to get free classes and get celebration, now is the time to help a girl out. <laughs> and I hate to ask for it, but if anybody's looking to order some things yet, you know, just remember you can get a free class with a purchase if it's one of the classes that's offered with a 
a minimum order. And also you get the free celebration item and I'll be doing one final drawing for the celebration board. I will probably do that. Oh, I don't know if I should do it Thursday night. I think I might have to wait until after the end of, because in case anybody puts an order in yet, like after class to the midnight. So I'll do the celebration board drawing at the first thing I can, first event I have after October 1st start. So, all right, you guys. And also if anybody wants to sign up to be on the team, I have two gals on my team. One will stay a silver if somebody joins her team and somebody will promote to silver if somebody joins her team. So, and you would all, you'd still be part of the Be Happy Stampers and get all the love from me that you, you want. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, just let me know if anybody has questions, you guys. All right. Lots of sunshine and love and hugs to you guys. Watch for Tip Tuesday tomorrow. It's about, I'm not going to tell you because it's going to be a surprise. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys later. Love you. Bye.